Hi everyone and thank you for tuning in to my channel where I talk about stocks, the stock market and investing. If this sounds like something you want to get more of, feel free to subscribe down below. In today's video, I will complete the next installment of my How to Read Financial Statements series as a beginner. Now, I've got a master's in financial economics and I've passed all three levels of the Chartered Financial Analyst exam. I've taught, you know, I'm teaching finance at the university level for several years. But I understand that all of you may not have such a robust financial background and you might be working as an engineer or something else and you just want to understand the, stock, the stocks that you're investing in. So this is a series aimed for you, for the non-financial professional to get more accustomed to reading financial statements to understand the stocks that you're investing in. All right, so let's get right into it. Here I have pulled up the form 10K for Peloton. And so companies must file quarterly financial statements and an annual financial statement. The annual statements are called 10K. The quarterly statements are called 10Q. Okay, so let, let's get right into it. Now, you're going to see a lot of legalese, and you don't have to read all of that. Um, those are just a lot of information, just boilerplate. They're put onto each financial statement, and you can kind of just glaze over it. Not that they're not important. It's just something that I wouldn't advise going into when you're just starting out. So when you're just starting out, the main factors to consider is going to be item one here for business, item f item uh, seven for management discussion and analysis, and item eight, the financial statements. So those are the, th the only three that we're going to get into here because as, as you can see on the top left, this is a 360 page document. It would take quite some time if you were to go through each and every page. But we're not going to do that here. We're just going to go through the basic factors, the beginner's factors. Okay, so let's get right into business. All right, so here you'll see that the company gives a nice little over, overview of the business. And they say Peloton is the largest interactive fitness platform in the world with a loyal community of over 6.9 million members as of June 30th, 2022. Okay. So we define a member as an individual who has a Peloton account through a paid fitness connection subscription or a paid Peloton app subscription. Okay, so there's two different types of subscriptions. That's interesting to know. All right, so a little further down, I've highlighted that they produce hundreds of orig original programs per month and maintain a vast and constantly updated library of thousands of original fitness and wellness programs. So that's a primary selling point for Peloton is that they not only sell you the exercise equipment, but you get access to live and recorded programming for a monthly fee. Their connect connected fitness product portfolio includes the Peloton Bike, the Bike Plus, Tread and Tread Plus, and the recently launched connect connected strength product Peloton Guide. Our revenue is generated primarily from the sale of fitness products and associated subscription revenue. So that's their business model. They sell you a really expensive exercise bike or treadmill and then they sell you the subscription that gives you access to live classes every month. So you pay over a thousand dollars for the bike or treadmill and then you pay a monthly fee of $44 per month for their subscription. And as you might imagine, they have a very, and they note here, they have a very low net monthly connected fitness churn. Churn is another word for cancellations. So they have a low percentage of their customers that cancel every month. And that makes sense, right? If you're shelling out $1,500 to buy an exercise bike that gives you access to the live and recorded classes for $44 a month, you're not going to you're not likely to cancel the $44 per month because that helps make your $1,500 bike 
more valuable to you you get to use it in those exercises with those live and recorded classes so you already paid fifteen hundred dollars per month and that sort of locks you in to paying the forty four dollars per month and that's historically what peloton has observed the very low cancellation rate once people buy that uh, initial uh, exercise equipment exercise machine and so that gives them an attractive lifetime value for connected fitness subscriptions in excess of their customer acquisition cost so because customers stay with them for a long time it gives them a high customer value imagine forty four dollars per month is about five hundred dollars per year every five years that's twenty five hundred dollars if a subscriber stays with them for ten years that's over five thousand dollars plus the fifteen hundred they pay for a bike so that's sixty five hundred dollars that's a lot of value coming from just one single customer and that's what Peloton describes in this in this section there okay moving on I have highlighted their Peloton so they have two different subscriptions models that they noted earlier one is the one that comes with the purchase of an exercise bike or a treadmill the other one is a subscription you don't need to have their exercise equipment for you can just buy this subscription and this it's called peloton digital and this helps them attract new connected fitness subscriptions so this is a base a beginner level subscription to exercises and things you can do without Peloton's bike or treadmill but as a member of that program you're more incentivized to maybe upgrade to Peloton's other equipment if you're a fan of the, of Peloton digital after a while of using this app it might in, they can engage you and they can perhaps send you promotional offers to try and get you to upgrade to buy the bike to buy the treadmill and become a, a full-fledged member of Peloton here they talk about their technology they say their content delivery and interactive software platform are critical to the member experience we invest substantial resources in research and development to enhance the platform, develop new products and features, improve the speed, scalability, and security of the platform. I agree with them here. One of the main selling points of Peloton is the access to the robust library of content, live classes, and recorded classes. That's what makes Peloton, that's what differentiates Peloton from another exercise bike that you could buy with Peloton it comes with a large 22 inch screen that you can watch instructors and engage in a live class along with other members and you could see scores of how you're doing versus other members and that's what makes it more engaging and that's what attracts customers to the platform so in that process they've developed a library of a content library with thousands of classes across all different types of exercises and that could be another selling point here is that as the months go on and they keep every live class becomes a recorded class that can be taken by uh, invest uh, sorry uh, subscribers in the future so if you can't make it to the Friday live class the live class is recorded and then if you want to watch it and and take part in it on Monday you can do that of course you won't be doing it at the same time as all of the other members were doing it in, on Friday but you can still watch the instructor and gain the tips and follow the class as 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 the live members were so as that library increases it makes becoming a Peloton member that much more enticing because you have that many more classes that you can take part in So right now they're in a few countries. They're not all over the world. Um, they do have, they do sell their products in the United Kingdom, Germany, and Aust Australia. And as they expand into other non-English speaking countries, they tend, they intend to produce localized content in local languages. So for now, they currently produce in English, German, and Spanish, so they can expand on that. And they have a lot of opportunity worldwide. They're, they're only in a few markets right now. Okay, so 
here I've highlighted one of the more important aspects of how they do business and that is they primarily sell direct to consumer meaning they sell their products directly to customers through a multi-channel sales platform that includes e-commerce or their website, inside sales, showrooms, and a small number of store within store concepts. So this was all, you know, exclusively, that's how they used to sell their products. But recently they made a deal with Amazon which I think they highlight here, they announced a deal with Amazon in August of 2022 where they're going to sell the Peloton bike, the guide, and some accessories and apparel in Amazon's U.S. stores. So that was unprecedented for Peloton. They had never partnered with any third-party sellers prior to this announcement with, with Amazon. So this was in response to the significant slowdown in Peloton sales as economies reopen and their aim to you know kind of jump start sales a little bit they say here they had as of june 30th they had 135 retail locations across the u.s canada united kingdom australia and germany so a relatively small footprint of stores of uh open right now they talk about their manufacturing and logistics as well they have historically manufactured and assembled all of their products in-house and some third-party deals but in July of 2022 they announced a shift to utilizing third-party manufacturing partners for 100% of their manufacturing so now they're not going to manufacture at all it's all going to be outsourced and that was again in response to the significant business slowdown as economies reopened peloton's costs were soaring while revenues were decreasing in the connected fitness product segment so they're aiming to lower their expenses and this is one way they're doing it here and so they're moving to exclusively utilizing third-party partners for last mile network in North America and exploring similar transitions to a more diverse variable network in international markets and this is for logistics and for fulfillment previously Peloton was also handling all of its last mile fulfillment it was delivering it was it had people that it hired and used its own network to deliver its products and now it's it's completely moving to third party in that regard as well so you can you notice a trend here where peloton is trying to outsource all of these activities in an aim to lower its its fixed expenses and move it more to a variable cost because if you're if you have a deal with the third party typically those deals are on a per sale basis so you only pay once you have a sale you don't have to incur that cost unless you make a sale so it's more directly connected to sales and that way if there's no sales then there are no expenses which is what peloton is having a lot of trouble with right now it's having its sales fall but its expenses are not very strongly connected to sales as of yet and so while sales are falling the expenses are not falling in line with sales and so there's that imbalance that's causing massive losses on the bottom line this is the new ceo making these changes trying to connect costs with sales in that way if there's no sale there's no cost Speaking on competition, they believe that they have a first mover advantage, leading market position, brand recognition, and integrated platform that sets them apart from other market for connected tech-enabled fitness. They provide a superior value proposition and benefit from the clear endorsement of the connected fitness subscription. What they're saying here is that they feel confident in what they're offering they feel confident in their product in their service that part of their business they feel strongly about and this says nothing about you know the imbalance between costs and expenses the real trouble in peloton's business is that they over invested in capacity and they have too much expenses they have no trouble with you know they have a really awesome product even before the pandemic peloton's sales 
were robust. They were growing sales at 100% per year for several years, even before the outbreak. So they have a popular product that customers love. It's just that they overinvested in capacity because they got all of those increases in revenue during the pandemic. So they thought that this was going to continue and they overinvested. That's what's leading to some of ma the major changes and the significant fall in the stock price. Okay, so we've looked at the business. So now let's go back to the beginning, back to the table of contents and go to the next section that I touched. I said we were going to touch on, which was the management discussion and analysis item seven. Okay, here we are. And so management talks about uh, the fourth quarter and fiscal 2022 update and recent developments. So while we have been able to grow more than we anticipated just two years ago, fluctuations in demand and supply that we have been navigating during this time period led us to grow our operations beyond what we believe is currently best suited for our business. In other words, their sales grew so fast, they responded to that accelerated growth by investing, acceler accelerating in capital investments in capacity, but then sales retracted and they weren't able to decrease their, their cost basis subsequently. And so now there's a misbalance in the business because they're not able to accurately forecast where demand is going to be. And so how can they match costs along with demand? For that reason, we saw earlier that this, this new CEO is moving more towards a variable cost structure. That way, if they are off in forecasting demand, it won't be such a big negative to the business because the cost will automatically decrease along with a decrease in sales. Still, there's a lot to be done before the company can get to that point because previously it was complete it was it had a strong fixed cost structure and to shift it to a variable cost structure a business of this size with billions in revenue is going to take some time so here they talk about this restructuring plan and it includes reducing our headcount closing several assembly and manufacturing plants including the completion and sale of their shell facility for the previously planned peloton output park this was a $400 million planned investment in its own manufacturing facility. Now what they're going to do is just build a shell facility and then sell it once they get it, you know, uh, 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 to the point where they can just sell it. They're not going to complete that project anymore. They're going to close and consolidate distribution facilities. They're going to shift to third party logistic providers in certain locations. And they expect this to be completed, substantially completed by the end of fiscal 2024. So it is going to take some time. It's not going to be instant. It's not going to be in the next few months. The total costs for this restructuring plan were so far $611 million in the fiscal year that ended 2022. There's still another two fiscal years to go of this plan, so there's more costs to be taken Additionally, on August 12, 2022, they announced the decision to perform <coughs> excuse me, eliminating their North American field operations, warehouses, including significant reductions in the delivery workforce. Eliminate a significant number of the roles in the North America member support, exiting real estate footprint, and reducing North America showroom presence. So a lot of divestments, a lot of moves aiming to lower costs. To make matters worse for Peloton, it is dealing with a recall. So on May 5th, 2021, they announced a voluntary recall of its Tread Plus products in conjunction with the um, Consumer Protection Agency. And in August of 2022, they were notified by the CPSC that they failed that they the agency staff believes they failed to meet their statutory obligations 
and so they might be liable to more costs because of this and it's just another uh, another headwind for the business to deal with and it seems like it just keeps adding up for peloton like they can't catch a break ever since economy started reopening Okay, going further down, they give you a nice little breakdown of their key operational and business metrics. They give you a breakdown, and I've highlighted here their ending connected fitness subscriptions. And like I noted, they have a popular product. Their subscribers increased from 1.1 million in 2020, 2.3 million in 2021, and almost 3, billion, uh, 3 million in 2022. And uh, remember earlier I said very few of their customers cancel and here's there's evidence of that just 0.6% of their customers in 2020 and 2021 canceled that increased a, uh, but a lot but in 2022 but still it's less than you know less than 1% of their customers cancel and so that that's a that's a really strong customer retention rate and even though they're um, the hardware side of their business where they sell their bikes and, and exercise equipment is struggling, their, su their subscription side of the, of the business is doing quite well because they keep so many of their customers and the profit margin in the business is robust here. You see it increased from 57 to 62 to 67.7%. They have a 60 subscription gross, proje gross margin healthy healthy levels for that side of the business here they note that they increased the price of the subscription to forty four dollars per month from thirty nine dollars per month effective june first so er earlier we saw that their cancellation rate increased and now they we see a likely cause of that in that fee increase from 39 to 44 dollars per month those members that were on the fence you know thinking about canceling thinking about canceling when they got that email saying their price is going to go up by five dollars that was the last straw on the camel's back that probably led them to cancel their subscription Okay, moving along here, they show another nice little chart here is showing their consolidated statement of operations. And we look at their revenue and their revenue breakdown between how much of it was the connected fitness products or their hardware, and then how much of it was their subscription or their live and recorded classes. And we see the side of the business that's struggling is the connected fitness products. This is where the sales boomed from 1.4 uh, billion to 3.1 billion and then fell to 2.2 billion so there that's where the decrease was subscriptions didn't decrease they're still rising in 2022 uh, still while the connected fitness product sales declined by a billion the cost of revenue in that segment increased by 200 million so even though their sales fell by 33%, the costs increased by roughly 10%. That's not what you like to see. Here they talk a little bit about the fiscal year ending June 30th and uh, 2022 and 2021. They say they're 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 connected fitness product cost of revenue increased year over year the increase was primarily driven by inventory reserves primarily related to excess inventory we do not expect to sell above cost man that's bad news if you can't even sell your inventory above the price you paid for it then that's really a troubling sign for uh, customer demand going forward and that's what led to connected fitness product gross margin turning negative 11.3% from a positive 29%. A dramatic turnaround from positive 29% to negative 11% is rare to see from a business of this size in a, just over one year. 
and that was primarily driven by increased inventory reserves, higher logistic expenses, increased port port and short storage cost, cost deleveraging, and the uh, the reducing the price in order to sell more product. So lots of bad news here for Peloton. Okay, so that's it for that section. Now let's go back to the table of contents and look at their financial statements. Now that we have a, a, a foundational understanding of what's going on in the business, we can look at the financial statements and the numbers will mean a lot more to us now that we have that understanding. And that's item eight. And what we're looking for is the balance sheet, the statement of cash flows, and the income statement. So here is the balance sheet, and I've highlighted a few important figures. We see here that they have 1.2 billion in cash and 1.1 billion in inventory. I would question the value of this inventory because if they're saying that they're having a hard time selling it even at the their cost, I don't know how much more of this they're going to have to write down and say that, you know what, it's not actually what we thought it was worth. So 1.2 billion in cash. So now let's see how much debt they have. Uh, they have 864 million in convertible notes, and then they have 690 million in a long-term loan. Together, that makes about 1.55 billion in long-term loans, and they have 1.2 billion in cash. So not not too terrible in terms of cash to long-term debt. That's not too terrible for Peloton. Moving on, this is let's look at their income statement. And we see here revenue exploded in 2021 from 2020. And then now it's falling back down, mainly because of the connected fitness. But at the same time, look at that jump in operating expense. Gosh, and that's not coming at a, at a good time when revenue is falling. Total operating expenses more than doubled from $1.6 billion to $3.4 billion while revenue is falling. That's the troubling sign here. This is what the CEO is trying to get under control and and I it remains to be seen if he can do it because this is a large lift. This is a heavy lift in order to, to be able to do that. Moving on is cash flow from operations and one of the more important things to look at in cash flow from operations is the net cash used in or provided by operating activities. This is where you want the company to be generating cash from because it can also generate cash from financing activities, which we'll get to down a little bit later. But, you know, it's not really anything to be proud of if you go out and you borrow money to increase cash. That would be raising cash through financing activities. We want to invest in businesses that generate cash from their operations, from producing a product or a service and selling that product at a service at a price that generates free cash flow. That's what we want to see. And for Peloton, that wasn't the case in 2022. In fact, they they lost $2 billion in cash from operations. That's, that's really negative. And in the shareholder letter, management said that in its most recent quarter, they were negative $400 million in free cash flow. So with only 1.2 billion in cash and losing 400 million in its most recent quarter, that's not sustainable. They need to quickly bring costs down in line with revenue if they want to sustain themselves without having to borrow more money. Here we see their net cash from financing activities and in 2022, we note that they lost 2 billion in cash from operations. They also raised 2 billion in financing so they sold stock in the to the tune of 1.2 billion and they also borrowed 700 million dollars so that's how they financed that 2 billion in losses so there you have it peloton's basic beginner walkthrough of its in, of its financial statement of its 10k statement that gives you a, a foundational understanding of the business that you can build from 
from here. Now, if you're interested in whether or not Peloton stock is a buy or sell, I have a video on that, which I will link to at the end of this video. And you can, if you're interested in finding that out, I'll link to the video of that. But that's all I have for this video. Thank you for tuning in. And I'll see you next time for the next installment of How to Read Financial Statements. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beat the market by more than 250%. Go to fool.com slash parkev to get your 10 stock picks now.